of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no GD. Now, there is only herbs and spices. Through Miriam, though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. Try again. Don't tell me I'm going to start from the very beginning. Oh, please don't say otherwise. Alright, let's, uh, let's quickly go through this. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's not happy. Oh, where can I fast forward it, can't I? Uh -huh. uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, chicken. Mm. Mm -mm. There we go. Alright. So we swam through the towards light, which we shouldn't have. I'm going to try and focus my mind. You let your body rest in your, let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it. Scrutinizing, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe? Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be... Uh, what the hell is that? You really did it! How bold! How adventurous to use... I don't know. Can I? I can't see that. You tried to go even deeper into the sea of flavours, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realise that this information was meant to remain a secret. And yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realise that everyone in this room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've travelled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. I'm going to approach him. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if you could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef? What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors. Uh, that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'm willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Marxy. I give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient? You can't tell. I use this. Is something my great grandmother taught me. That? Wow! You never had guessed that! In fact, you're not even sure where you guessed some if you searched. It's heroin, isn't it? And that definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Something, sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduate. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on the world and you can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Like him to show your own strength. Wow, him with a big idea. 
and add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Or be modest, but thoughtful. You know what, let's go with the spice. Go on. You know about that. You know about that? Let's forget about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It was a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavours. I actually had some thoughts on how you could improve it. Improve it? You want me to change my secret recipe? And you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? <gasps> heard of them? I tend to in, I attend an entire garden of chili peppers varieties. Habanero Pobla what the hell? Poblano Cayenne or Cyan, whatever. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to Let this be the last time I you improvise on my recipe, GD. I'm heading back to class for the next lesson. That certainly did not go as planned. You better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. So we've stepped into a massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Just like a lot of veg. Look at this place, it's magnificent! I think we get to show our stuff. Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything. Except maybe kisses to the crowd for fans you're going to earn with your signature. Adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. I want Miriam! Why? Hey Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wanna be my partner? Aww. Sure GD, I'll, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner! Boop, boop, boop. Hmm. I'm my uh, two pro potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen. I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you think you... Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Pop or Clank? Oh, you don't know screw it. Go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam would be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I've already. It's okay. I've already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this point juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He eats up and begins to roll back and forth. Whoop whoop whoop! Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. <laughs> she reminds me of what's it called? I don't know from Kill the Girl. Kill. I, off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of her. It's just how she's standing. <laughs> Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. It's a mouth. He's got a face. Look, there's the eyes. There's his mouth. I bet I don't know what that bit's for. Yeah, I know Clank. I like you too. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clunk judders and panel shakes loose. You get an impression that this is a sign of affection. I'll say you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking class work. Alright you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tatar seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. 
Is an octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Or mashed potatoes and gravy. Let's go with mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down... I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm. Inviting. Comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I don't like your chi I like your chicken, oh, mate. Just saying. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. I just noticed your rips on your jeans are shaped like chicken drumsticks, actually. That's kind of cute. Sanders' heart is my business. If, you, if you'd better keep your fingers off my man. <laughs> Did someone call for me? Uh, no, cheese up, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing GD's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returned, arms full of... Well, this music cloud. Filled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Ashley, no. It looks like GD was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day we might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I don't, I'm, get, I'm getting into these voices. Personally, I have no doubt whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concord creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. Well, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that was positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a finer drumstick. Just, it just makes sense. Nothing about this makes sense. But one, yeah, none of this makes sense. It's a culinary school of three days. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, and you don't, if you don't watch out. You have him. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of horns in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever best, who always has your back. Miriam! You turn to Miriam, who as soon as you find her, she senses, uh, senses it and looks back. The skills friend in need radar is second to none. Nice. She immediately comes running over. Is some more friending, my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think it's Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust? Vice of eyes. My skill vis a vis, whatever. My skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are surely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but GD is my partner for today's activity. Look for sprinkles in hope that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found! Don those cute corgis and their sharp or sturdy stature. Damn you, corgi! You look down at your station and realize that in tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Oh, sweet. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfect creamy mash of texture and plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. You know, uh, uh, wow, I am losing my voice. You know, I'll, you know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. 
He is holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Look at that, that is a potato and gravy bowl for you. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. This is this is weird. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds the spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't in immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in the crazy world stops. No, I want this to stop. Oh man, your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> if you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and leave the heaping spoilful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage without thinking, you fling the spoke full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid beautiful face. Man Van, do something, do something! Skipping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potato and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold right there, GD. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both be both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over and co a covered dish in hand. What the hell? Oh, nice. Mashed potatoes and gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky sil salt water sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the la first bite. And you will all look on with envy. The interrupted student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! <sighs> Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite white. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven? I don't... I don't feel so good. It killed him! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate and the rest of it gone, you notice the tip of tentacle being slipped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost immediately back to his obvious, oblivious self. Oopsie! He's like poison! The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The clutch bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusias enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I am... I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Ghost of student. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you've shaken up by... The, seeing that you're shaken up by the really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please. Let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! 
You follow Stu Colonel San Colonel uh well words are gone now. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a, a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Class today? Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Ken Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, in a way that you find insp insp yeah, inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for- I AM NOT DEVELOPING FEELINGS FOR COLONEL SANDERS! S Colonel Sanders? STOP MAKING ME SAY THINGS, GAME! Yes, JD? There's something I need to tell you. THANK YOU, VAN VAN! <laughs> HOLD IT RIGHT THERE! There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see? When I was just a boy, I had a dream. That one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a whole lot of weight. Look at me, nice glutes. Like so many weights, there was a lot of weights. We should follow our dreams with all our heart, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up! I'm the one here saying inspirational stuff, and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? <coughs> You can't prove that. Hmm. You also killed that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long sad sigh. <sighs> Forget him! We're talking about me! Me, 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 me! I'm the hero! <coughs> Spoke Monster. No! Spoke Monster! The Spoke Monster is here to fight a hero! <coughs> um. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you f- Charlie. How dare you friend me with just- uh, Charlie. How dare you friend me just as I was laying down my guard and connecting with another shaft on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me. Because I am a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose or is it just a coincidence? Well, before you can discuss a, a, a syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? What the hell? I'll attack. You decide to go on to an attack. Which type will you use? I'm gonna cook with love. Does it, it doesn't want damage. It just got real! That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. What about defend? You decide to defend. Which defense do you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and enjoy whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do the. You do you. Four months of focus their mashed mind and draws the energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I feel like I should defend again. Yes, I will use... Buff up! You draw energy throw into your arms. Thinking back on all the stirring you did in the kitchen as a child. Your muscles grow super swole. And you're ready to take on anything! What's going on? Small monster has it is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on attack once again. So much you use... You... Utility... Well, whatever. Utensilize. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. That's why I'm going to attack. 
with Chow down, he does two damage. A powerful blow. Sport Monster is oozing cheese sauce into the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Being invulnerable, Sport Monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain. <coughs> Vile villain, your reign of terror starts here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Hot Pie Power Pinch! Hot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Sport Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured Sport Monster spews steam into the night. Spare this wretched beast. You managed to turn down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast. Uh, it's a gnarly, it's gnarly beast long enough to realise that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast. And don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and certainly won't be back, like you said. The smoke monster scores off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be... It appears at first to be a cookbook? But upon closer inspection, it is so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card stuck inside. The last name to have signed it is... Orko. Hmm. Orko? That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet, in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final. Sorry about that. I just read some. Back on. As you come down from Battle Buzz, you realise that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. <clears throat> Without any energy, you keep your eyes open. Darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my Colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Oh. Wow, is that ghost... 